Hi, welcome back to Chainlift. Let me ask you a question. How much space should I put between this heading and this paragraph? You might say that it could be like, just equal to however tall the heading is. That would be one unit, or maybe 1.15, or 0.25. But if it gets much farther away, then it stops really seeming like they're connected. It gets absurd, right? Like, we know that the heading and the paragraph need to stay within this sort of comfort zone. That's straightforward enough, right? Well. What about when we get a subheading in the mix? Now this is a little bit more complicated. Should this be closer to the heading, closer to the paragraph, or exactly in between? What if we put this in a card and add an image or an action bar? Suddenly it's not so straightforward. We haven't even talked about other factors like the border radius yet, but a properly spaced out card should look like this. When we compare it to what we started with, you can see that the one on the right feels much more balanced. But is it really? Let's zoom in and find out. Which one of these has symmetrical padding? Many of you might think that it's the one on the right, but it's actually the one on the left. The one on the right feels better due to something called optical corrections. And to better illustrate what I mean by that, let's zoom in on the other one. You see, mathematically, the padding on this card is symmetrical. The left and the top padding are equal. They're the same number of pixels. But it doesn't really feel symmetrical. We want it to feel like the text would slide perfectly up into that top left corner. But when the padding is actually symmetrical, you wind up with a little bit too much on top. There's extra space. And if I correct it, you can see how the extra space would bleed over outside of the card. Now it turns out this extra space is actually derived from the difference between the bounding box height and the actual literal rendered pixel height of the text shapes themselves. They're equivalent. So, when we offset by that exact same amount, we wind up with something symmetrical. That answers one question mark, and this just gives us an idea for how complicated spacing can really be when you dig into the details. But what about all these other ones? How far away should everything be from everything else? How to find the perfect spacing? For our purposes, there are three laws of spacing. The first is that every element is related to every other element, even if it's just because they're in the same viewport. Some relationships are stronger than others, though. This is where your information hierarchy comes from. And the stronger the relationship is, the closer the elements should be together, generally speaking. Let's talk about relationship strength. And we'll do it by looking at this mock-up of Apple's desktop mail app by Austin Condiff on Figma Community. An example of strongly related elements would be the heading and subject line within each list item here. They're part of the same informational unit, the email, but by contrast, we would say that this specific heading and this sidebar menu item have a very weak relationship. The heading is tied to the email, but the sidebar item is tied to the app's overall navigation. Some elements are strongly related, like this heading and subheading, and a weakly related pair would be the heading and the weather icon. They're farther apart, and they're less visually similar. We're still just looking at lorem ipsum though. If we replace this with actual content, then we add a new layer of complexity to the environment. Suddenly, the relationships have shifted. The strong and weak relationships are reversed. The heading and the icon are telling us about the weather. So now they have something in common, but the subheading is telling us what city we're in. To fix this card, we'll move the icon to the left and make it a little bit bigger. Now, looking at them side by side, you can see how the one on the right more accurately reflects the relationships between the elements. How much space to use, and when? Do we just eyeball it? No, don't eyeball it. Instead, we're going to use preset spacing values from a scaling system. And for this demonstration, we're going to use the LiftKit system. Here, we're designing an employee handbook. We need to break up the spacing to make it a little bit easier to read. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is apply some color grading to just make it easier to spot different levels in this type hierarchy. Now, we're going to look for relations. We'll scan through the document and group elements together into pairs. For example, title and subtitle. That's easy. Heading and subheading. Still pretty easy. But what about this paragraph? The paragraph complicates things but we'll take it one step at a time. We have three text elements here that are technically part of the same informational group, so it really comes down to the one in the middle, the subtitle. Is it more closely related to the title or to the paragraph? 
I think it's more of a subtitle, right? So that relation is stronger, meaning they are gonna be closer together than the subtitle in the paragraph. We're gonna go to our list of variables and figure out which one of our presets we wanna choose from, and we'll apply extra small. So when we zoom in, we do want to remember that the margin is always derived from the larger text element. Always apply the margin to the bigger one. Now, that's one relation taken care of, and we can move on to the subtitle and paragraph. The only real rule here is that they just need to be farther apart than the first two. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna skip a level. I'm applying the value of medium. So that's an extra small space, a medium space, and now we're done with those two. And moving on to removing the annotations, you can see that it's a lot cleaner. When we go to the next pair, now we have the same paragraph and then the heading that's coming right after it. Now, quick contacts is an entirely new section in the document. Semantically, it really has nothing to do with the paragraph that comes before it. So we can see that if we look at spaces A, B, and C, A should be bigger than B, which should be greater than C. Remember, when we're picking variables to use here, we've already used extra small and medium. So I'm gonna choose large. And the reason I'm not skipping a level again is because the spacing scale in LiftKit is exponential. You don't really have to skip levels once you get past medium, but it can be helpful when you're dealing with extra small and small. So we'll go through the whole document like this and we will eyeball but with parameters. The scaling system gives us some creative freedom and prevents us from making bad decisions. And at the end of our process, all of the relational pairs will have their spacing assigned. And then when we remove the annotations, we can see how much easier it is now to read. That does leave these padding problems in the tab links and the table cells, which I'm just gonna do right here because this video is already getting kind of long. And when we look at them side by side, you can see how much of a difference it makes to apply this system. Here's how you can actually implement this. There's three ways. The first way is to just use LiftKit. It's a clonable Webflow project that offers a lot of benefits I'll get into in a second. Option two is you can DIY. You can just learn the math and come up with your own system. And then the third is that you can just pay Chainlift to do it. LiftKit's my favorite suggestion because not only is it free, but it's also super lightweight. It's not a component library. It's a framework that just establishes guardrails for you. You can also learn it in like a day. Uh, I think that a lot of frameworks that require courses to learn are kind of unnecessarily complicated. LiftKit is designed to be, well, designed to have an incredibly gentle learning curve. And there's no math involved. You can visit chainlift.io slash liftkit to install it. Again, it's a Webflow clonable, you're gonna love it. Option two, option two is DIY. And one of the pros of DIY is that it's not really that hard. There are a lot of formulas that inform where these spacing units come from, but they're not difficult to memorize. But it does take practice. It's not as intuitive as learning liftkit, and uh, it may require a few days of practice, but overall, it's still not that bad. However, I can't help you. If you do go for this route, then uh, Chainlift can't really give you any support. I mean, I'm always happy to help and answer questions and things like that, but uh, I can't guarantee that I will be able to fully wrap my head around whatever custom system you build for this. I am working on a Patreon course, and I know I just said the courses are stupid, but not mine because it's me. The last option is you can just hire Chainlift. We'll set it up for you. Uh, we'll offer training, teach you and your staff how to do the whole thing, implement it with your framework, make sure that it works correctly, do QA, all of that good stuff. You know what hiring an agency is like, and you get free support forever, which is also pretty cool. So other than that, this has been a glimpse into the secret science of perfect spacing. So if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I get notifications directly uh, because the channel is still pretty small. So uh, there's a chance that you'll hear back from me pretty quickly and if you leave a comment. Uh, it's the easiest way to get in touch. You can also email us. I think there's an email plastered everywhere. Visit my website. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.